Today, let us take some time to study the Word of God with the sermon titled, The Understanding, that has been given to us. Let's see God's Word in Psalm chapter 14. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 14 verse 1. The fool says in his heart, What does he say? There is no God. One of the most foolish people in the world is the one who says, There is no God. The fool says in his heart, There is no God. What are their characteristics? They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand. This understanding is an important part. If there are any who understand, any who seek God, according to these words, what is the characteristic of those who seek God? They have understanding. Let's see verse 3. All have turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people, as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. Psalm chapter 14 states that those Shay who lack understanding do not seek God. Then, isn't understanding an important characteristic that God's people must cherish? Those who lack understanding will fall into the absurd and mistaken thought that there is no God. Thus, they will become corrupt. Their deeds will be vile, and there will be no one who does good. On the other hand, those who have understanding will never end up like that. Let's see the same words in Psalm chapter 53 verse 1. Let's take a look at chapter 53 verse 1. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. This is the current state of the earth, but those who have understanding are destined to seek God. The Bible tells us that those who possess the understanding to seek God Jehovah in the age of the Father, Jesus Christ in the age of the Son, and the Spirit and the Bride in the age of the Holy Spirit. They are God's true people. Then, for those who lack such understanding, it is written that God will absolutely not grant His grace to them. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 27, verse 11. When its twigs are dry, they are broken off, and women come and make fires with them. For this is a people without. What do they lack? Understanding, so their maker has no compassion on them, and their creator shows them no favor. God does not show any favor to people who have no understanding. God has given us this powerful message. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 20. Announce this to the descendants of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people, without understanding, who have eyes, but do not see, who have ears, but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord. Should you not tremble in my presence. 
I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, Let us fear the Lord our God, who gives autumn and spring rains in season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Their sins have deprived them of good. Why is that? What do they lack? According to verse 21, God awakens us to the fact that this kind of result will come to those without understanding. Then, how does God identify those who have understanding? Let's turn to the book of Psalm, chapter 111. Let's take a look at Psalm, chapter 111, verse 9. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have. What do they have? Good understanding. Thus, we can conclude that all the churches which do not keep God's commandments but instead follow man-made rules lack the very understanding that God constantly emphasizes. What do the people who keep God's commandments possess? God enlightens us through his teachings in the Bible that such people do possess understanding. Let's see verse 10 again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. In this age, people who lack understanding say with their lips, I believe in God. But they despise all the teachings of the Bible. Although we preach to them about Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother, and God's commandments of the Passover and the Sabbath day. If God's commandments are despised, then who are they really despising? They are despising God, who proclaimed the commandments. Let's say that a king established a law and proclaimed it to all the citizens for the sake of a peaceful life. However, among the citizens, if some laugh at the law and violate it, what does their action mean towards the king who established and proclaimed it? In Daniel chapter 9, it is described as an act of rebellion. That's why it is written here, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Who are those who fear and revere God? They are the ones who follow God's commandments. What do all who follow his commandments have? They have good understanding. Today, let's find out who these people with good understanding are. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman. When we read from verse 7, the dragon mentioned here is described as the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep, what do they keep? God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. What does God say about those who keep his commandments? In every age, God says that they have the understanding given by God. We must have this understanding. If we think of this understanding as enlightenment, it will be easier to comprehend. God promised to grant them sound enlightenment.
that is, good understanding. Ultimately, it is given to those who acknowledge the existence of God and maintain a firm faith in Him. What do the rest of the woman's offspring in Revelation chapter 12 faithfully keep? They are described as those who keep God's commands. They are the only beings on this earth, belonging to the side of good, who will engage in the great battle against Satan. We can consider them as those who dwell in righteousness. The rest of the woman's offspring, who keep God's commands, are the only ones who have understanding. As it is written in Psalm chapter 111, those who keep God's commandments are those who have good understanding. That is why Father came to the earth to give us understanding at his first coming and at his second coming as well. Let's confirm this in the book of 1 John, chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are. Who are we? Children of God, and that the whole world is under. Whose control is the whole world under? The control of the evil one. In other words, they belong to the evil one. Verse 20. We know also that the Son of God has come, and what has he given us? The purpose of his first coming and his second coming was to give us understanding. He has given us understanding. What will those who have received understanding through him know? They will know him who is true, that is, God. So that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Here, the Bible teaches us that God came to this earth to give us understanding so that we may know the one who is true, that is, the true God. In the age of the Father, it was God the Father Jehovah. In the age of the Son, it was God the Son Jesus Christ. And what about in the age of the Holy Spirit? We will come to know the Spirit and the Bride, that is, God the Father and God the Mother. Ultimately, it is through God's commandments that we come to know God. For this reason, what was the first thing God restored when he came to this earth in the age of the Holy Spirit? He restored all the laws of the truth of the new covenant. What was God's will in giving his children the law of the new covenant and allowing them to keep it? It was to give his children understanding. Only then, whom will we come to know? We will come to know God. Everyone, if we didn't know the Sabbath day, the Passover, or the feasts, could we have understood the words written in Isaiah chapter 25, in that day they will say, surely this is our God, even if we read the verse a hundred or a thousand times. Absolutely not. He will swallow up death forever with the aged wine. Even if it is written, thousands of times in the prophecy, could we have understood it? We would have only understood it as, God just prepares an ordinary banquet with wine. If we don't understand which wine in the Bible God uses to swallow up death forever, although the mape, the sign of the royal secret inspector is revealed, in other words, the new covenant Passover is revealed, we would not have recognized it, but thought, what is this for? Why is it necessary? Those who keep God's law, are the ones who have good understanding. Thus, what did God say he would do with all the lost regulations, decrees, and laws? He would come to this earth to restore and recover them for us. What else did he do for us, other than restoring them? He himself even taught them to us. 
Let's take a look at the book of John chapter 6, verse 45. In chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus said, It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by. Whom will they be taught by? God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. What did God teach mankind when he came? Let us take a look at the prophecies related to the age of the Holy Spirit we are living in to see what he taught. Micah chapter 4. Let's take a look at Micah chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days, in other words, in the last age, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. John chapter 6 verse 45 records, it is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. This work has already been prophesied. Among many records of the prophets, when we look at the prophecies in Micah chapter 4, it says, he will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. God will teach us his ways, which we should obey and put into practice. Also, what will go out from Zion? The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord, from Jerusalem. The law of Moses came from Mount Sinai. Then, what law would it be if it comes from Zion? It is the law of Christ, the law of the new covenant, which is said to come out from Zion in the last days. And when he teaches us his ways, we must learn and walk in his ways. God would make known to us a law that we must follow. Then, what kind of people lack understanding? They are those who are not in God's law. In the Old Testament times, in the age of the Father, they were those who were not in the law of the Old Covenant. After Christ came to this earth, it is accurate to say that those who are not in the law of the New Covenant are those who lack understanding. Therefore, those who outwardly wear sheep's clothing but do not follow God's commandments are no different than those who say, there is no God. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 15, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He clearly pointed out that their worship was in vain. If God had not come to this earth to restore the truth of the new covenant that had been shattered and abolished, could we have known God correctly? We would have served the wrong God, mistakenly believing we were worshipping the true God. The Israelites took a bronze snake and mounted it on a pole. For over 800 years, they believed the bronze snake holds some kind of miraculous power. It is a very sacred object that can heal anyone bitten by a venomous snake. With this mindset, they engaged in idol worship for such a long time. Then, how should we grow our faith? We should always grow in our faith based on the law God taught us and draw ever closer to God through the law of the new covenant. Can we know God without the law of the new covenant? Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. 
So the law was, what was it? In the English version, it says that it was our guardian. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. The role of the law of the Old Covenant lasted only until then. It is written that the law came to an end when Christ came to this earth. The conclusion of the Old Covenant was Christ. As we see in John chapter 5, whom does the Bible testify about? Jesus said, these are the scriptures that testify about me. Thus, the regulation of the Sabbath day and the regulation of the Passover on the 14th day of the first month by the sacred calendar all contained a prophetic will. Whose sacrificial blood was to be revealed through these regulations? Weren't these regulations fulfilled by Jesus Christ? That is why it is written in Galatians, the law was our guardian until Christ came. If the law of the old covenant led all mankind to Jesus Christ, then to whom does the law of the new covenant lead mankind? Ultimately, the conclusion of the law is God. Thus, what do the Passover bread and wine symbolize? Don't they symbolize God's flesh and blood? God has given us enlightenment and teachings in this way, through the law. Only those who keep the commandments are considered to have understanding. When God came to this earth, he gave us understanding and even granted us spiritual eyes to correctly recognize the one who is true, God. Therefore, according to Revelation chapter 22, whom does the law of the new covenant lead us to in the age of the Holy Spirit? Let's see chapter 22, verse 17. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Then, what must we know to recognize the Spirit and the Bride? We must know God's commandments. The commandments serve as a stepping stone that ultimately leads us to know God correctly. Just as the law served as our guardian who leads us to Christ, the law of the new covenant plays a role in leading us to God, just as the law of the old covenant did. If you and I did not know about the Passover, would we understand what is written in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 4? The one who swallows up death forever with the aged wine is our God. Would we understand that scene? It can never be understood. On the Passover, Jesus told his disciples, This bread is my body, and this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We would never understand this, either. Furthermore, we would never understand the words in John chapter 6, verses 53 and 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. In the Garden of Eden, the tree of life gives eternal life. But in the Gospel of John, Jesus taught us that whoever eats his flesh and blood, meaning, keeps the Passover, has eternal life. How can we understand this relationship as the shadow and the reality? Since we learned about the Passover, doesn't all of this make sense? Can we not also understand that the place we are in is Zion, where the feasts are kept? However, people do not keep the feasts nor the commandments of God. Thus, how can they possibly have any proper understanding? They can never have the spiritual eyes to recognize God. Therefore, what will be their result? Let's take a look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 11.
Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11. For you, this whole vision, that is, the whole Bible, is, what is it? Nothing but words, sealed in a scroll. If a book is closed, can we understand what is in it? This is their situation. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read, and say, read this, please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. No matter how intelligent and smart a person is, they will not be able to understand the meaning. Verse 12. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read, and say, read this, please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. Whether someone can read or not, they cannot understand the words of truth hidden in the Bible. Isn't this true? Verse 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are. How are their hearts? Far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely. What is their worship based on? Human rules, they have been taught. This is an important point. Those who have been taught by God's commandments have a good understanding to correctly recognize God. Let's see what will happen to those who have been taught with the human rules by looking at verse 14. Therefore once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. In other words, it is something very perplexing. The wisdom of the wise will. What will happen to their wisdom? It will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will. What will happen? Vanish. Today, people are in such a spiritual state. Even though looking at the same Bible, they cannot see the Passover. Nor can they see the second coming Christ. Nor can they see Heavenly Mother. It says that God has made all wisdom, intelligence, and discernment vanish. It is because they are being taught with the rules of men. How truly fortunate are we? God himself came to this earth, according to the prophecy of the prophet Micah. He will teach us his ways, thereby awakening us to Heavenly Mother, who is to come, after Heavenly Father, through the path of the new covenant truth. For this reason, Father left us the teaching. Elisha followed Elijah, Joshua followed Moses, Peter followed Jesus, and I follow Mother. He also said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. In this age, many false teachings are rampant on earth. There are many falsehoods and enticing words that momentarily captivate people's hearts. You and I are the rest of the woman's offspring who keep God's commandments as foretold in the Bible. Since we are the rest of the woman's offspring, let us keep God's commandments until the end with the good understanding God has granted us and recognize father and mother correctly so that we will be together forever in the kingdom of heaven. Nowadays, we receive this question quite frequently. Why can't others understand this when other churches also read the Bible? It has been written in the Bible since ancient times. But also just as it is pointed out here, what will happen to the wisdom and intelligence of those who keep the rules of men. The wisdom of those who claim to be wise will perish, and the intelligence of those who claim to be intelligent will vanish. The Bible teaches us that the wise with correct enlightenment are the ones who keep God's commandments and have received understanding. Who are these people? According to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, they are the rest of the woman's offspring. Our God has granted us understanding to recognize the one who is true and restored all the regulations, decrees, and laws of the new covenant.
hoping that we will give eternal thanks, glory, and honor to Heavenly Father An Sang Hong and to New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother. On this blessed Sabbath day, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.